Hey, what's up guys? This is Pulse Fired Gaming coming up with another uh, ship showcase. If longtime viewers of the channel uh, will know that I did a very early video on the Babylon 5 faction Earth Force. Uh, and this is kind of a video to show how much that uh, force has grown and changed over the years and just what a fantastic little innovation having your own 3D printer can do for you. What I wanted to do is just showcase a little bit of the ships that I have. Um, this is basically everything. It's not all the files that I have for Earth Force, but it's everything that I've printed mostly. Um, first of all, a little talk about scale. When we produce ships at Pulse Fired Gaming for our own table, uh, for the videos that are showcased on the channel. The scale that we use is rough and it's not consistent in between universes, but it follows one rule where if it looks correct on the table alongside Star Wars Armada, which is a fantasy flight game, that's what it goes for. What that means for, Star, for Babylon 5 is that mostly these ships are printed at one to 10,000 scale. Um, now, Star Wars Armada is not nearly as consistent, but what can you do? Right here I've got a ISD that was printed uh, to be exactly Star Wars Armada scale alongside a Omega Destroyer that was uh, printed at 1 in 10,000. And the rule is, you know, does it look good on the table alongside Star Wars Armada? And I think it does. So that is a word on the scale that we use. By the way, these flight stands are designed for, uh, by RFX Design on Pinshape and are available. The files are available there if you have your own 3D printer. If you need them printed, Pulsefire Gaming can print them for you. So let's get into the ships a little bit. One thing that this new showcase has allowed me to see is just how long, how far I've come as a 3D printer. Right here we're going to start off with the smallest ship that's not a fighter, the Hermes Transport. You can see this was printed on FDM. It's not a very high detail part and the little fins that are supposed to be akin to what you see on Star Fury uh, didn't really print out right. So this was an early print of mine. Uh, alongside that, you can also see on the Poseidon assault carrier that it doesn't look its best, especially along the bottom side. It looks okay, but it's not its best. But, you know, you learn uh, what you can about 3D printing and you improve. And you'll even see as we go, there's a smooth transition between ships that were printed just on FDM uh, like an Ender 3, like these printers, for instance, and then ships that were printed via resin that come out and have their details really pop. So starting with the Hermes, move on to the next ship, the Artemis. This was the early Artemis design that was printed in FDM, and then recently we changed the design a little bit to add better weapons, more surface detailing, but you'll notice that not only did the detail change, but the ship size also changed. When you can iterate with 3D printing, you find that you can make changes on the fly. So moving on from the Artemis, we're gonna go to probably my favorite ship of all, uh, the Olympus. There's this Olympus file that's been painted. This one specifically was done on FDM. And a lot of the details came out on it. But you look at one like... This one was a failed print on a resin because there were some holes in the... Uh, there were some burnt pixels out on the screen that led to these fun little holes. But you can see that it's got a lot of detail. But I think the FDM ones came out fantastically. Now, the Olympus is probably one of my favorite ships, but I think no showcase of Babylon 5 ships is complete without the Hyperion. 
This has a funny little naming convention on it because depending on who you ask, it's either the Hyperion class or the Roosevelt class. The Hyperion being one of the names of the ships themselves uh, in the Babylon 5 show. But I think most people agree that it's a Hyperion. Okay, moving on. We have one that wasn't really seen in the show, but it's featured heavily in the lore and the miniatures, the Avenger carrier. This sh ship was meant to be phased out pretty early on in the history of the Earth Force, Earth Alliance, Navy. Something you'd see during or after the Dilgar War, but not much after that in the service of Earth Force, but it did find service later in um, other fleets. A couple other ships that we have of note. We have the big honkin', big chungus uh, transport that you saw in the show. And then much later on in the show, they introduced that the Psycops had their own little variant that would stay in hyperspace and spy on people. And this is that. But on to the bigger ships. We have the Nova Dreadnought. And this one was printed in FDM, I think. Is this F yeah, this is definitely FDM. And then I have another example one that was printed in resin right here. And then the Omega Destroyer, which is kind of the, when you think of Babylon 5 ships, the Omega Destroyer is definitely the, uh, the ship that most people think of. Now these ones are printed here, either on resin or FDM, but here's an example of one that you can get that's absolutely stunning on Shapeways by another maker that actually has a rotating section, which I strongly recommend. Finally, we get the two kind of giant guys. We have this Warlock class uh, destroyer that was made after the Earth Alliance uh, signed the ISA's agreement and got access to uh, anti-gravity and stuff like that. Here's it in FDM. And then a much, much better version in resin. You can see even the uh, little grids by the hangar bay is pretty nice. This one still has a couple little zits that are where the supports were uh, when it was printed in resin that need to be shaved off, but there we go. And finally, it wasn't the scene in the show, but it was featured in the uh, miniature materials. We have the Poseidon Heavy Carrier, which lore-wise was the result of Earth Force needing a carrier and then utilizing the um, design from the Nova and the Omega. You see that it's got the crisscross living section, it's got the engine section from the Omega, and it's got mostly the bridge as well. Now, if you're using these for full thrust, you can make up your own rules, and that's definitely part of the fun of full thrust, but there are some rule supplements that have been produced that actually take out all that work for you and you can just use these right away. The two that I'd like to feature is the Jane's Fighting Shipyards uh, Babylon 5 Earth Alliance book that was written by Kelsey Seal over at Emerald Coast Skunk Works. And if, you are, if you're interested in getting into Full Thrust or learning a little bit about it, the Emerald Coast Skunk Works website is awesome for that. Um, because they have fleet books for not just Babylon 5, but they have a couple books for Babylon 5. They also have books that will integrate other universes uh, into full thrust, such as like the Romulans from uh, Star Trek, the ships from Mass Effect, just all kinds of really fun things. And Emerald Coast Gunk Works is definitely a fantastic place to see. Um, you can see on this SSD sheet for the Olympus, it actually has very simple and easy to understand SSDs for it. And then coming on, this is the original. If you're old, you probably had this book. 
This is the Babylon Project Earth Force source book. This is a supplement to the role-playing game based on Babylon 5. You'll notice here that in the credits, they list John Tuffley. John Tuffley is the guy who made Full Thrust. So in the back of the uh, source book, it has SSDs for uh, Babylon 5. If any of this interests you, feel free to join the Full Thrust Facebook group or come visit us at Pulse Fire Gaming for lots of other videos based on Full Thrust. Um, this has been a pleasure. Uh, thanks for watching and have a good day.